Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I will also have to speak in English. You do not want to listen to my Kinderdeutsch. As it says, I am a witty lama. You can find these slides on the Twitter stream. I just tweeted them about 20 seconds ago, if you'd like to play along at home. And I represent two hats simultaneously here. One as the Wikimedian um, speaking to you all. There are obviously many other Wikimedians, Wikipedians in the room, um, many over here, but we are hidden around. But I'm also representing Europeana, which has been mentioned this morning already, and is an organization that, that these two organizations have a lot in common with a similar purpose and much, many synergies. So my job with these two communities is to build the bridges and hopefully achieve more together. And I hope to explain a little bit about what that means in this presentation. To start with, though, I'd like to speak about GlamWiki. GlamWiki, galleries, libraries, archives, museums, is the acronym we use instead of uh, the heritage sector or memory institutions. Uh, I've heard LAM, Library Archive Museum Broadcaster, with the silent B, which is cute. But GLAM is also quite cute, I think, and the culture institutions themselves have started to use this around the world. GLAMWiki is our attempt to bring the Wikimedia community as ourselves, but also as representatives, as vanguards of the open web, of the collective community online, into cultural institutions to say that we actually have more in common than we have apart. Yeah, there are things we disagree about. There are procedures and processes and mission statements that don't 100% align, but that's because we are different things. But we have so much more to give each other. So, in 2009, the relationship of Wikipedia and the glam sector was not a relationship, it was a fight. It was, at best, ambivalent in both directions. Both groups fear the, fear the other as trying to either defend an ivory tower or barbarians at the gates. Neither of these approaches is helpful. So five years, three months ago, I ran a conference in Canberra. I'm Australian, but I, I live in Italy now. Uh, I ran a conference in Canberra to say, we need to be in the same room and actually talk to each other. The summary of GlamWiki really is that we are here for the same reason, for the same people, for the same purpose, and in the same medium. So we really should be doing that together. Obviously, there are many other things that Wikimedians, Wikipedians, and the cultural sector do, but compared to every other website, I, I cannot think of a single other website that has more ideological connection to the cultural sector than the Wikimedia community. And so what that led to was me going around to a variety of cultural institutions and saying, hello, can I please volunteer for you? And the first one that said yes, after a lengthy risk assessment process, was the British Museum. So I went to London to prove the point that having a Wikipedian inside the institution is a valuable thing. This was scary to both communities for fear of conflict of interest, for fear of misuse of public funds or misuse of donation funds, so I was a volunteer. What we achieved there was, I think, great because, well, I was involved in it, but it also helped start a movement within the movement of Wikimedia, which we call GlamWiki. The British Museum and the Wikipedia website were founded on the same day, not the, not the same year, but the same day. And I think the 
mission statements are remarkably similar considering the different periods that they come from. This is the same thing. This is the same desire being expressed in a different cultural context. The past is a different culture, uh, as they say, but these are the same people. And you can imagine that the same people who wrote these documents, these mission statements, would be interchangeable if they were living in different centuries. You will note that the Wikimedia statement does not include the word internet, does not include the word wiki, does not include the word encyclopedia. If the most efficient and effective methodology for achieving this mission was to put clay tablets attached to carrier pigeons, then we would be in the pigeon breeding industry. Wikis and the internet is just the method we choose to achieve this goal. So in practice, what we achieved at the British Museum in five weeks was to try and pilot as many different kinds of relationships that, crucially, were of mutual benefit. Every cultural institution has different advantages, disadvantages, risks, uh, concerns, or f things that they can move freely with and things that they are constrained by. And that is OK. But this was an attempt to say, OK, at the British Museum, at this time, what can we do together? One of the most popular kinds of activities that museums and cultural institutions do with Wikipedians is multimedia donations, image collections, upload them. That was not part of this, this variety of activities because of the particular policies and constraints that the British Museum had at the time. And that's OK. I disagree with those policies, but that's OK too. So some of the things that we can do together, and I would encourage you from your own institutions to think maybe this is applicable to you, and then maybe come and speak to Wikimedia Deutschland and say, hey, can I have, can I have a Wikipedia too? Because really, if you, do you have a volunteer program? If you're from a cultural institution, actually, you're from a cultural institution, do you have a volunteer program in your institution in some way? Yeah. Many, many do. Do you have a digital volunteer program? Do you have e-volunteers? Yeah, a couple. Of, thank you. That ruins my, my, my cute little thing, but, <laughs> but that's good. Wikipedia. Wikipedians are your digital volunteer community. They're already engaged in your content. They're already doing stuff about you with your material on your subject area. They're just not affiliated with you yet. And they would like to be. Everyone likes to feel acknowledged. And Wikipedians love museums. So there's a, you know, we want to work together. So these are some of the things that we did together at the British Museum. Feature article planning. I would put individual Wikipedians who were interested in topics, subject areas in general, the Ice Age, Greek art, or specific objects that were relevant to the British Museum, in contact with the relevant curator, and vice versa. If the job of the curator is to receive questions from the public and answer questions from the public, and a librarian or an archivist, if they spend a lot of time answering similar banal questions from the public, surely answering that question once to a Wikipedian will save you the time forever in the future because all of those people asking those simple questions will go to Wikipedia first. They will receive their answer. They will see the footnote back to the institution. So you still get the credit. You still get the connection to more detailed information. But the drive-by knowledge seeker is satisfied. Unlike every other website, especially news websites, we want people to leave. Anyone who leaves Wikipedia from a link in a footnote is a satisfied customer. 
We want to send people on to where they can get more information. Anyone who leaves a news website is a lost advertising revenue. We don't think like that. Backstage pass tours, these are behind the scenes shows. As we heard this morning earlier, everyone likes to see behind the scenes and Wikipedians are no different. It gives you a sense of familiarity and uh, emotional connection with your cultural heritage institutions. This is the same story for any kind of a friends association in cultural institutions. QRpedia, you are familiar with QR codes, the often joked about things. I think we do them best because people know what they are going to receive. Most QR codes are embarrassing and silly because they are too small or on a bus <laughs> or you don't know what you are going to get or it is an advertisement with a Q Why would I click on a QR code for an advertisement? I don't care. With a QR code from Wikipedia, you know what you are going to receive, especially if you are from a small cultural institution that does not have the time or money or expertise to translate this caption about this object into 20 languages, we can do that for you. And because of the nature of the internet, with a mobile device, you scan a QR code, we can send immediately the relevant language that your phone is. If your phone is in Catalan, we will send you that article in Catalan. And if we do not have an article in Catalan, it will fall back to Spanish. And if it doesn't have an article in Spanish, it will fall back to English. That's a really cost-effective way of translating, if you are a small heritage institution, for example, of translating content for, a, for an audience that you cannot normally speak with. Wikipedians in residence is, is what I was, am, and there is now a community of Wikipedians in residence around the world. There are dozens. Some are full-time, some are part-time, some are permanent. The National Archives of the USA, NARA, has the world's first full-time employee Wikipedian in residence. That's pretty exciting. They consider that putting their content available on Wikipedia is worthwhile funding permanently fully because that is then going to provide access to Wikipedia articles, different languages, different communities, and the information will spread further. This is not the same as having a social media monkey person. And I was a social media social uh, monkey person at a major cultural institution. That's marketing. This is important. <laughs> Sorry. One-on-one -on -one collaborations. These were, you know, Literally, you know, I will put you in touch with it. Matchmaking services. You're interested in a topic, you're interested in a topic. Well, you have the time, you have the books. Let's go. And then the, the, uh, that idea on steroids is the editathon. In this particular case, the Hoxon Challenge, based on the Hoxon Hoard, a collection of Roman jewelry, silver, gold that was discovered buried in England in the town of Hoxon, one of those impossible to pronounce British locations. And we, co we collected Wikipedians who were interested and had lots of experience with all of the relevant experts in metallurgy, archaeology, the Roman period of Britain, who were all British Museum employees. They had written all the relevant books all this information was in the building. Okay, let's get together. I will put you in a room, lock the door, give you Wi-Fi and coffee, go. And we now have, in my opinion, the best Wikipedia article in the world on this particular topic, the Hoxon Hoard. Can someone please tweet that? <laughs> because it is the only Wikipedia article in the world that has been peer-reviewed by every single relevant academic in that specific topic. I, actually, I should clarify, there is now also the uh, Wiki, I think it's Dengue Fever, 
uh, I, I think it's dengue fever, is the, has been peer-reviewed in a medical journal recently, the Wikipedia article taken into a mainstream medical journal and peer-reviewed as a perfectly correct survey of the topic. This is the first time that a Wikipedia article has gone to a journal and been edited up and stamped, not the other way around. That's very exciting, especially when you start translating that article into languages where the particular disease is more common. Very important for public health. But I digress. You can find all these examples at glamwiki.org. And I, sh I should also point out the Wikipedia library, which is an internal project that has come from the Glamwiki community to try and provide access to closed access resources. Obviously, we prefer open access, but obviously there are many things not open access that are still important pieces of information that deserve to be used and cited. And so this is an attempt to convince closed access journals, etc., to provide some free login addresses for Wikipedians to use their resources because they know that's good advertising for their database. And for us, that's good access to knowledge. You know, it's, there's an ideological difference, but the purpose is sharing knowledge. This is the one slide explanation of the idea that the, of the concept that, that the idea has grown. We now have Wikipedians in residence around the world and just and different kinds of topics, different kinds of activities that are tailored. Just a couple of weeks ago in Mexico City at the Museo Samaya, this is the main hall of the Museo Samaya with uh, the thinker, Rodan's the thinker in the, in the background overlooking us. This was a 50-hour editathon marathon where we, they literally opened the museum for two days overnight, staff security, to help us build a relationship and write the content about their collection and about their topics and Mexican art. Fantastically expensive for them, but also fantastically good relationship building with this community. Portal to platform. You are familiar with Europeana to some degree at least but I would like to emphasize how in the 2015-2020 plan we have with Europeana, the idea is really to shift from being Europeana as website, as search engine, as repository, to being a platform where you can build stuff, where you can take information in and out and use it elsewhere. Just because you're using Europeana information not on Europeana does not mean it's a bad thing. That's actually a better thing. This is the visual version of what we heard this morning, that most stuff, most European cultural heritage is not available, is not digitized. And only a portion of that is actually available in Europeana. Europeana is not the be all and end all, but it is pretty important. And so there is a large gap between what, is, what exists, what is available, what is available in a shared metadata repository. So the priorities are for the next four years to improve this data, make it more accessible, make it more open, make it more shareable, and to provide actual specific value for the partners that are the Europeana partner network of GLAMS. So there is more a sense that it is not just a one-way traffic of images and metadata going to Europeana, but specific benefits coming back. One of those goals, of course, is to grow the pie, that more digitization, more available, but also to change the proportion of what is available under a free license, under an open license, in some form, but also the proportion that is available under a free license, not this non-commercial, non-derivative stuff, which is, from Wikipedia's perspective at least, useless. Okay. 
And so this is the cute diagrammat diagrammatical version of bringing in, pushing out. It's a two-way traffic in all directions where you have the core procedures, the core processes in the middle providing the platform that others can build on, not just sucking in. We have user services where people can say, I want to do something cool with this information. I want to be able to repurpose it in a structured way. I want to build apps. I want to teach. And you also have end users coming because they like pictures of, of this particular topic. They want more audio archives because they want to learn what happened to their grandfather in World War I. And I think much too small is the Wikipedia logo here. I obviously think that's quite important, but that's where I sit. One of the ways, one of the ways we are trying to build this relationship is through, for example, what we call the Glamwiki toolset. This is a system to provide a usable mass upload of multimedia process from a Glam digital asset management system, website, or Europeana itself, to Wikimedia so that those images can be used in Wikipedia articles more easily and therefore illustrate the concepts, the specific objects, but also the broader concepts. That, that is where people will find them. You know that most of the material and cultural heritage archives is, is captioned more or less well, but no one is necessarily going to know it exists unless it is pushed out. I'm not going to go and search through 50 different small museums in some country to try and find maybe an image that I didn't know existed. I'm going to Google that concept and click on the first link, which will probably be Wikipedia. And if the image is from that cultural institution representing that concept, then that is a win. That is the successful reuse of cultural heritage information placed in an educational, free access, multilingual location, we all win. Now to, in my remaining time, I would like to provide a, I was asked to give some fiery words. So this is my challenge, my mm, hope. A couple of years ago, Wikimedia Deutschland ran this campaign to try and provoke comment, provoke public awareness or questioning the idea of what does world heritage mean in a digital age? What does cultural heritage mean in a digital age? Does world heritage only mean buildings and natural locations? Does digital culture count as a genuine cultural expression? This, was, this raised a lot of awareness and great interest. We had a petition with 100,000 signatures. That's exciting. I would like to focus that question onto the Memory of the World register. Memory of the World is for documents what UNESCO World Heritage is for buildings. And these are the criteria. Every document is a creature of its time. I think Wikipedia fits these criteria, all of them. Every document is a creature of its time. The place of its creation is a key attribute to its importance, the internet. The social and cultural context of its creation, open access movement, and a lot of political pressure from different countries. There was a Wikipedian who died on the Maidan protests recently in Ukraine, taking photographs for commons to illustrate his country's his contemporary history for Wikipedia. And I think that fits the uh, social and community significance. The documents have an emotional hold on people. There is no other website that calls itself a movement. The, the subject matter represents a particular development. The form is a particular type of presentation. I think these are all things that Wikipedia embodies. However, oh, and, and I realize I'm out of time. And this is the mission statement. Compare 
what we said before about the British Library, British Museum, and Wikipedia. This is the vision statement of the um, memory of the world and Wikimedia. I will not read it for you, but you can see, I think they are the same. I think the idea is the same. Again, the slides are online. You can read this for yourself uh, at greater detail if you would like. But the major complexity here is that the memory of the world register, logically, requires the document be fixed. You cannot register something as heritage and then add to it later or delete it or chop it up. It has to be a specific, finite, complete document or archive. Makes sense. What does that mean for Wikipedia or for the internet? Remix and change are the vernacular culture of the internet. Stability, fixity is the anathema of Wikipedia and the open access movement. What, this is my question to you then, what does documentary heritage mean for internet native culture if fixity is a requirement of the definition? Thank you.